So I was listening to the radio. Uh, I, I know, I know. Who listens to the radio anymore? But hear me out. So I was listening to the radio, and I found the game on. And it was already a little bit into it, but I decided to record it anyways, because uh, I thought you guys might enjoy it. Now, it's only audio, so I, I'll probably put up some, some pictures or something. But you guys don't actually have to watch the video. Just, just listen to it. It's pretty cool. This is John White, reminding you to buy Acid Pops. This sweet is delicious and has quite a zing to it. However, the makers of Acid Pops would like to remind you that they are not responsible if you leave them on your tongue for too long. The players are still in timeout, and it's been an invigorating game so far. As you know, here in America, Quad Pot is the most popular sport. But in recent years, Quidditch has started to challenge Quad Pot's placing in the hearts of American witches and wizards. And that popularity has only strengthened the two teams we see playing today. The Sweetwater All-Stars versus the Fitchburg Finches. This matchup between arguably the two best teams in the USA has been a long time coming. The Sweetwater All-Stars first gained recognition back in 1993 when they beat the French team favorite, the Quiveron Quaffle Punchers. While the Finches of Massachusetts have a well-deserved reputation as they have won the US League more times, well, more times than I can count on one hand. It looks like the timeout is about over, folks. For those of you who don't know the names of the players, I will refer to them by their road numbers, with the Chasers numbers 1 through 3 and the Beaters 5 and 6. The score is currently 500 to 430 in favor of the All-Stars, who have the home field advantage here in Texas. Can the Finches catch up, or is the Texas heat too much for them? Only time will tell. The clock is in here, and they're up, and the Finches have it. The Finches Chaser 3 takes no time heading for the goal, and flies upward with the All-Stars right behind them. But he throws the quaffle down past the All-Star Chasers as the Finch's Chaser 2 catches it in a flawless Porskoff ploy. I haven't seen a Porskoff ploy this good since 2012, folks. It looks as if the Finch's may score as this Chaser has a clear path. But wait! The All-Star's beater 6 has slid into place with a bludger backbeat, sending the bludger behind him and hits the Chaser as she drops the quaffle. Oh, that's going to leave a bruise. Which reminds me of one of our sponsors, Brew Removal Paste, made by the international Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, bringing you fine merchandise since 1996. Now, All-Star Chaser 2 has the quaffle. As he bobs and weaves his way down the pitch, he makes a pass, and it's intercepted! The Finches Chasers get in the Hawk's Head attacking formation, which I don't need to tell you is an intimidating arrowhead formation. As they get closer, the Pittsburgh Beaters fall into formation, and holy moly! The Beaters use a doppel beater defense and hit a bludger at the same time towards the opposing keeper, knocking him off balance. And the Finches score! The score is now 500 to 440 in favor of the All-Stars. It's still anybody's game, folks, as there has been no sign of the snitch since the All-Star Seeker almost caught it several hours ago, but accidentally collided into one of its fellow teammates. The, the All-Stars have the quaffle. All-Star Chaser 1 heads down the pitch in a zigzag movement known as the Wulong Gong Shimmy, but she can't seem to shake the finches. A bludger is flying straight towards the chaser. And wow! She does a reverse pass over the shoulder to Chaser 3 in the middle of a sloth grip roll and dodging the bludger. I've never seen anything like it. The Sweetwater Chaser 3 goes for the goal, but it's blocked by the Fringe Keeper performing a starfish and stick maneuver. A risky maneuver as the keeper holds onto the room with one hand and a foot wrapped around while spread out like a starfish. The Avengers have the quaffle, and they're off, continually passing it between chasers to keep the All-Stars off balance. They impress the goal. The quaffle's thrown, and the Avengers score! That puts them just 50 points behind the All-Stars which must taste sweet to the finches, not unlike the semi-sweet chocolate taste of chocolate frogs made of 70% croco. Be sure to get some today. But the finches may not be able to catch up, as it looks like the all-star seeker has once again spotted the snitch. He chases after it, as it leads him between the goalposts and in a loop. But wait, the finches seeker has come from the opposite direction, and both seekers are heading straight for each other with a snitch in the middle. This is really intense, folks, as it seems they will collide. Oh my gosh! The snitch has altered course and flown straight up. Both seekers manage to spin around each other, following the snitch upward as the seekers orbit each other and fly upwards. I wish you could see this, folks. It's really spectacular. The snitch breaks away and is heading straight for me! Wow, that was close. The snitch made an impossible turn down, and both seekers followed before they crashed into me. It's a race, folks, and the racers are neck and neck. They're following the snitch close to the ground now, and the all-star seeker has gained the lead. He's within reach, folks, and this is it! The snitch has been 
being caught. The Fincher Seeker did a death-defying loop past the goalpost and did some kind of spinning maneuver as she barely snatched the snitch from the All-Stars, leading the Finchers to victory. The match is finished, and that brings the score to 500-600, to 600, with the winners being the Fitchburg Finches. It was an intense match, folks, as the Sweetwater All-Stars and the Fitchburg Finches seemed evenly matched since the start. But several hours into the match later, the Finches have clearly won the match. Congratulations, the Fitchburg! After such an invigorating match, it's a perfect time to go buy some Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans. I think I'll have one now. I really hope this is Apple. Grass. Well, they really mean every flavor, folks. Remember to stay tuned to this station for our next broadcast. Garden Gnomes, your muggle neighbor's decoration, or a pest in disguise.